Hello and welcome to Coyote News. Last week on Live, we told you the muck is expanding. This week, we have more details. Also, hear about local deals just for you and an update on the USD marching band. And the God of Carnage comes to Vermilion. But first, here's Haley Meyer. Haley? In state news, Deadwood gambling revenues are down again. Deadwood casinos collected almost 5% less than last month. The state report indicates last year's smoking ban contributed to the decline. The Deadwood Chamber of Commerce director says they're doing everything they can to attract people to the area. However, it's not enough to create an upswing for the gambling industry. Prosecutors in New York are investigating whether Long Island high school students cheated on the SATs. Seven current and former high school students were arrested. Officials say juniors paid a 19-year-old college student $2,500 each to take their exams. The man faces charges of scheming to defraud, criminal impersonation, and falsifying business records. Tyson Fresh Meats is recalling about 130,000 pounds of ground beef. An Ohio family became ill after eating the beef contaminated with E. coli. Four other Ohio children are ill after eating the beef, and a nine-year-old girl was hospitalized for about 10 days. The beef came from Emporia, Kansas. Brianna? Thanks, Haley. You've seen a lot of changes on campus. Now it's time to find out where we're headed. Tomorrow night, President Jim Abbott's presenting the annual State of the University Address. Coyote News' Teresa Johnson's at the Muck, live with President Abbott. Teresa? Hi, thank you so much for joining us live in the Muck. President Abbott, can you tell me a little bit about your State of the University Address tomorrow? Well, I can tell you that I've been working on it for two or three days of this week during a, a lot of interruptions, but I've been working on it. I, I kind of divide it into, uh, I guess, uh, three, uh, three separate sections, and uh, I really think you ought to show up and listen to it uh, rather than me telling you very much about it. But I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, what I would say is uh, probably good news, and then uh, I will talk about campus updates. I want to talk about challenges. So. Um, I think those are the three basic uh, categories. Okay, and how would you say this year's address will differ from last year's address? Well, I don't know that it'll differ a lot, at least in terms of format. I'm not inclined to read a speech, so I try to uh, list the topics that I think are important, and then I just talk. Uh, I'm never quite sure if that's a good idea or not, but basically that works for me, so that's what I do. Okay, and um, your speech tomorrow is in Knudsen Theater at 3, and why should an average student show up to listen to your address? I think it's at 4. At 4, excuse me. I, well, you could be right, but I'm, I'm guessing 4. Um, well, you know, sometimes I think it's uh, good for every student, faculty and staff a, a, as well, to, to just listen to what, um, sort of like the year in review although it's uh, required by the Senate that I uh, address the state of the university um, within six weeks from the beginning of school. So it's always a little bit of a difficult time because we don't get enrollment numbers until, in this case, yesterday. So we're always in a little bit of a rush. But I think what it does is kind of summarizes, at least for me, uh, and hopefully for everybody else, where we are and where we're going and where we'd like to be. Okay, well, thank you so much for joining us live, President Abbott. Thank you. Back to you in the studio. Thanks, Teresa. Over the next 10 years, the University of South Dakota plans to spend nearly $19 million renovating or upgrading student facilities. As Coyote News' Lorena Riker reports, one of the facilities receiving a makeover is the Munster University Center. The Muck has become a second home to many of the students at the university, providing food, entertainment, a place to study, and a place to socialize. With the MUC expansion, we believe that it gives us the most options to maximize the resources and opportunities that you have for your dining facilities and then in a, in a convenient, comfortable experience on campus. With the MUC expansion, the university is looking at bringing national food brands to campus. All the different types of interviews we did, whether it was focus groups, one-to-one -one interviews, or surveys, students said, we want national brands. And by doing the expansion here, it gives us the chance to potentially bring in some national brands uh, onto campus, how we can expand our services. Coyote News asked students how they feel about the expansion at the Muck. I think it provides a great opportunity to expand the eating venues at the university. It'll be nice when they expand it, definitely, because there's just so much congestion going on at, at lunch, especially. National brands as opposed to Aramark. Um, 
I'm, I'm pretty excited about it, and I think that's probably the biggest benefit to the expansion that we could possibly get. For Coyote News, I am Lorena Reichert. Thanks, Lorena. Feedback from students will help USD decide which national fruit brands will be provided. We asked students which brands they'd like to see. Find out later in tonight's Out and About. Up next, Angelica Brackens blogs about fashion. And we'll tell you about new uses for your student ID cards. All that and more after the break. So wondering what you can do with those student ID cards? As Coyote News' Diana Johnson reports, the cards can lead to student deals across Vermillion. There are some places in town where presenting your student ID can lead to discounted prices. Freedom Gas Station is one of them. We have a five cent per gallon discount for students and staff. And we have a fountain pop any size up to 44 ounce for 70 cents plus tax. Student discounts also continue on at hair salons like cost cutters. What we offer is um, a $10 haircut. Um, bring, you get a card the first time you come in to get a haircut. And then you bring it in the next time you get a $10 haircut. And then you also get $5 off color. Hair by Stewart's gives 20% off all their services and products to students with their student IDs. Yet despite discounts like these, some students feel that businesses could improve on advertising themselves. And that the rest of the businesses around town don't make a huge effort to make themselves known with their student discounts. If I knew that someplace offered a discount, I would definitely use it more often. Businesses should like monopolize on the fact that they have a university here and use that to their advantage by advertising themselves towards the college students. The City of Commerce also has city coupon booklets for students. To get one, stop by their downtown office. You might have seen a new fad sweeping the campus. Up next, Coyote Blog's Angelica Brackens tells us why feathers belong only on birds. Angelica? Thanks, Brianna. Let's talk about fashion trends. As you can plainly see, I am modeling one of the latest fashion trends that's sweeping the nation this year. Who came up with this trend? It doesn't matter. I'm assuming that this trend was created to fulfill every woman's apparent desire to be part of the poultry family. Clearly, it makes a person look stunning. Clearly. With this trend, you can go from sophisticated, classy, and conservative to downright rude. Be the talk of the party by enticing fellow partygoers into finding the inner bird inside of them, just like you did. I guarantee you'll coin cute nicknames like Big Bird or Foghorn Leghorn. Wear them to a job interview and not get the job. Wear them around town and get attacked by birds, recreating a scene from Alfred Hitchcock's movie, The Birds. The possibilities are endless. Got a hot date tonight? Throw a set of hot pink ones on. He'll love the idea of dating a bird. I hope this trend never dies. Maybe I should start a new trend. Putting leaves in my hair. I hope it'll catch on as quickly as feathers did. Always on top of the fashion world, for Coyote Blog, I'm Angelica Brackens. Thanks, Angelica. I'll make sure to remove mine after the show. <laughs> Let us know what you think of Coyote Blog. Blog, look for Coyote News on Facebook. Coming up. Hear about USD's theater department's act next act and some quirks of the marching band. There are many ways to find out about the consequences of a DUI or distractive driving. Last week in the muck, Vern Idy and the Sioux Falls Safety Village gave students a first-hand experience. And the Highway Patrol set up two virtual driving tests. The test for drinking and driving, and also distracted driving. During the distracted driving test, the simulator actually sends your cell phone a text message. The drinking and driving test includes a sobriety test, 
a court appearance, and even a rejection at a job interview. Freshman Pedro Ibarra says he now has a new perspective. I was doing it, just really shows how distracting it was. Same with the drunk driving. The drunk driving didn't really show that much. It was more with the goggles exam, because that really messes with your balance. So. Days coming up, the University Police Sergeant Sam Nelson says the simulators are a good safety reminder. He says it's a much easier way to learn the consequences. The USD Theater Department's opening act, God of Carnage, is set to premiere tomorrow night. Members have been preparing for almost four weeks with rehearsals five to six days a week. God of Carnage has both drama and comedy in what director Eric Hagen calls a dramedy. This is a play that has, uh, you know, a lot of both. There are serious themes being talked about, but the behavior of the parents are just a little extreme, and so you get a lot of humor from that as well. The play tells a fictional tale about couples dealing with a fight between children. Whether you're a student or a parent, if you've had a child that's ever gotten in a fight, I think you will just find the situation of uh, trying to resolve that kind of a conflict between parents as immensely interesting. God of Carnage premieres tomorrow night at 7.30 in the Wayne S. Knudsen Theater. On the USD campus this week, it's the third annual International Education Week. Until Friday evening, the events include a British tea tasting, a kung fu demonstration, a panel on Middle Eastern issues, and study abroad presentations. Also, the international film Wasteland is showing tonight in Farber Hall at 8. Stay with us. Sports is next with Haley Meyer and Cassie Bartlett. Today on Coyote Sports, learn how a former USC football player is making an impact in the NFL. We'll have details on the Yotes trip to Wisconsin, and Kyle Miller has some advice for the Vikings. But first, Haley Meyer has sports headlines. Haley? Thanks, Cassie. Friday, two Minnesota Twins players were held from the lineup after they ran into each other Thursday night. Denard Spann and Danny Valencia were driving to the Minneapolis airport to leave for Cleveland when Spann's Range Rover rear-ended Valencia's. Valencia told the Minneapolis Star Tribune that it was bumper-to-bumper -bumper traffic, and when he stopped, Spann went. Neither player was injured, but Spann says it brought back a concussion symptom he suffered earlier in the season. Both Valencia and Spann played in Saturday's game against the Indians. In the NFL, the Buffalo Bills broke a 15-game losing streak to New England Sunday, defeating the Patriots 34-31 after trailing 21-0 at one point in the second quarter. The Bills fought back and scored 17 points in the fourth, including a 28-yard field goal as time expired, earning them their first victory in 16 games against the Patriots. The undefeated Bills traveled to Cincinnati on Sunday. The NBA season is in jeopardy. Players and owners can't agree on a new labor contract. The NBA has postponed training camps and canceled preseason games. But if an agreement isn't reached by early October, more games could be canceled. Both, both sides hope to make a deal before November 1st, when the regular season is scheduled to begin. That's it for sports headlines. Now back to Cassie with details on how the football team handled this weekend's match against the defending Big Ten champs. Cassie? Well, Haley, while I have you here, uh, I heard you talked with a former Coyote football player this past week. That's right. Ko Kwe was a starting D tackle for the Yotes who went on to an NFL career. When he came in as a freshman, USD was a Division II program transitioning to a Division I. He says his four years as a Coyote prepared him for the big league. I definitely knew I was at a disadvantage coming from a D2 school. There's, there's, no, there's hundreds of Division I college schools out there, so I definitely thought if I, if I was going to get to this level, I would have to work a lot harder and to, make, to make myself stand out, especially coming from a smaller school. After proving he has what it takes to go pro, Coe's NFL dreams soon became reality. I just, it actually, it, it was so surreal at the time because it was like I've been, I've been waiting for this moment like growing up and it's actually happened and just had to keep on, keep on giving them reason to come back to take me out the following year. So 
and everything ended up working itself out. Soon after his last season as a USD Coyote, Quay's NFL career began. I started off on the practice squad with the Jaguars. I got released there and he got picked back up by the Buffalo Bills on the practice squad there. And I was activated to the Browns active roster uh, week 14 of last year. So, and I went into, went into um, training camp with him this year. Got released from training camp after a training camp in the preseason. So I'm currently a free agent. Um, just talking to teams right now. Hopefully be land somewhere within the next week or so and continue playing. Quay explained that it is possible for players of all levels of college ball to play in the NFL. If it's truly your dream, definitely go get it. Because I've seen, I play with guys that come from NAIA schools to be have, to have leading roles in the NFL, be starters in the NFL. And I got guys that came from the same level as me doing the same thing. So if, if it's definitely your goal, you definitely want to do it. Definitely push for it because you, you never know who's watching. So never, never take a playoff no matter what, no matter what level you're playing at. If it's really your goal to play in the NFL, definitely go get it. Thanks, Haley. After a two-game winning streak, the Coyotes traveled to Madison Saturday to take on the sixth-ranked Badgers. USD had a strong defensive showing early, but Wisconsin's defense was too much for the Coyotes, and the team fell 59-10 to the Badgers. The Coyotes kept the Badgers from scoring until halfway through the first quarter, and Wisconsin continued to put up 31 points before halftime. The Coyotes trailed 31-3 to at half. Wisconsin added four more touchdowns in the remaining quarters, but USD couldn't reach the end zone until late in the fourth quarter. USD was paid $425,000 for making the trip. The Coyotes returned to the Dakota Dome Saturday to host Lindenwood at 4 o'clock. On this week's Miller Zone, Kyle Miller gives us his thoughts on the Wisconsin game and what's wrong with the Vikings lineup. Kyle? Thanks, Cassie. It was an exciting weekend of sports. The Oats faced the Wisconsin Badgers, the Buffalo Bills defeated the Patriots, and, well, the Vikings are the Vikings. Let's just say that if you're a Minnesota Vikings fan, you've seen better days. But more on that in a minute. So the Coyotes played the Wisconsin Badgers in football last Saturday. While Wisconsin did roll 59-10, there needs to be a clear distinction. The Yotes scored more points against the defending Big Ten champions than those stupid dust bunnies up north did against a putrid Illinois team, one that had to fight to the end to beat Western Michigan. Not Michigan State, Western Michigan. The Yotes' performance against the Badgers was nothing to hang your head about, considering the circumstances of the opponent, the hostile atmosphere, and the national audience, the Coyotes played a good game. Turnovers and missed opportunities did stall a few USD drives, when, but when you're playing the number seven team in the country, that's bound to happen. Take solace in this, the Yotes gave up less points to Wisconsin than Indiana did last season. The Hoosiers gave up 83, 83, and finally, the Vikings. Now I'm a Vikings fan, so it pains me to say this, but I have never seen this team so, so despicable. I don't get it. Minnesota can look like a Super Bowl champion in the first half, but come the second half, they look, they look like a team that Iowa State could beat. And considering the Cyclones are 3-0 and this year, that's a possibility. Somehow, someway, Minnesota needs to take charge of the season. Whether it's benching McNabb in favor of Christian Ponder, or if the defense actually steps up and makes a play in the second half, something needs to happen quick because right now, the Vikings are in a sinking ship along the river, and it isn't letting up anytime soon. For the Miller Zone, I'm Kyle Miller. Thanks, Kyle. Those Vikings really need to step it up if they want to win a game this season. You know, Cassie, their schedule's only going to get tougher as the year goes on. Well, hopefully they can figure something out. That's all for Kyle Sports. Coming up next is Out and About and Commentary. Stay with us. SpongeBob SquarePants has been in the news lately. He's being blamed for hurting children's brain development. Recent research shows that children under four aren't as absorbent and porous after watching the cartoon character. This week on Commentary, John Hines has an educational video to help you avoid destructive TV shows. It seems innocent enough. Lots of kids watch TV. 
and it seems like a good way to unwind. But sometimes there are dangers involved that never meet the eye. One never knows when there is a fast-paced program about. Timmy had a long day at school and didn't want to do homework right away, so he sat down in front of the boob tube to enjoy some quality television programming. Timmy didn't think there was anything unusual as the program made fast-paced and illogical scene changes. In fact, it seemed quite enjoyable. What Timmy didn't know was that the program carried a disease. A disease that was not visible, like leprosy, but just as contagious and dangerous. The program was a cartoon. Crazy and reoccurring tangents of overpaced nonsense. Cartoon. The cartoon was robbing Timmy of his ability to pay attention and solve even the simplest of problems. Poor little Timmy. So when you see the flash of a fast-paced cartoon on the TV screen, remember, duck and cover, and stay covered until the danger has passed. Earlier in the show, Lorena Rykirk reported on new restaurants coming to the muck. On this week's Out and About, we asked what food chains you'd like to see. I would like to see a subway in the muck. I would like to see buffalo wild wings in the muck. Some kind of wings that we could have every day, because I like wings a lot. Ruby Tuesdays and Perkins and like more restaurants that like stay open late and offer like a variety of food. Probably a subway or not, not a greasy fast food place. Something that Vermilion doesn't offer right now. I would actually love to see a KFC. I think an Olive Garden would be great to have in the muck. Combined with a Wendy's. I would like to see a Popeye's chicken. Combined with a Taco Bell. I want to see Taco Bell. Taco Bell. Taco Bell, definitely. I would like to see a Famous Dave's restaurant. I would like to see a Hoo Hot in the muck. I'd like to see a Chipotle. Probably a Subway or a Burger King. Panera and Jimmy John's. Probably Chick-fil-A. I'd really like to see something with more seafood in it. La Juanita's. Is that a real place? Yeah. The latest issue of the Vallant hit newsstands today. This week, a look at student housing. While Coyote Village is almost full, Julian Hall sees renovations. You can find those stories and more in the Vallant, or go to VallantOnline.com. You'll also find a link to the Coyote News page. On Saturday, thousands of people stripped to their underwear and ran through Salt Lake City to protest what they called the uptight laws of Utah. Undy Run organizer Nate Porter says the goal of the event was to organize people frustrated by the conservative nature of the state's politics. Nudity was prohibited by organizers, and some people wore political messaging express expressing support for causes such as gay marriage. Participants donned bras, panties, nightgowns, swimwear, or colorful, colorful boxer shorts. That's all for Coyote News. Make sure you check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Have a good night and a great weekend. We'll see you next week with full coverage for D-Days.